these stones. Here. Take these. Thank you. Thank you. What's all the shouting about? It's your old friend, Francis. He must be going mad. His madness is working miracles at the Church of San Damiano. You've been there? Well, my, my duty's taken me everywhere. I have to know what's happening to report to the bishop. Yes, the church wall is almost finished. What? Uh, <clears throat> Why doesn't he beg for food or money? Take stones to build a church. Please give me stones! It seems to be infectious. Other people are helping him. A shoemaker, a field worker, a tailor. Now, we could learn from him about putting ideals into practice. We take our spiritual heritage too much for granted. Surely not you, Canon. No, it has to be rebuilt occasionally. But can you watch him unperturbed? Something great moves in that little man. Do you have room for another section of wall? I hope to exchange this load of stones for a few old sins. You can't buy your way into the Lord's favor, Bernard, but certainly I'll always be grateful. Now, careful, you're sorting your clothes. Ah, oh, never mind my clothes. Would you come this way, please? Through here. Bernard, Quinta Valley. How can you, one of the wealthiest and most respected men of Assisi, support this folly? My support is limited to a few stones, mortar, nails. It won't make me poor. And yet last night when I asked you to contribute to the king's treasury, you refused. Because I find greater wisdom in Francis's renunciation of wealth than in your king's greed for it. Francis! Come to say goodbye. Thank you, Paolo. Well, I trust this mortar will steal my hand. Oh, I'm sorry. You can't shield them when you work with stones. Now, this is peasant's work. You're wasting your life. No, the Lord commanded me to rebuild his church. Perhaps he did, but not with stone. With weapons, as you were trained to do. How do you know the Lord didn't mean for you to take your sword and armor and go forth to fight against his enemies? If he'd wanted me to shed blood, he would have told me. Well, let us not say goodbye in anger. When next you pray to your lord, ask for his blessing. For on my return, I will marry Lady Clare. Has she agreed? I have her father's consent. And Clare's? Well, that will come in time. Now, Francis, in my absence, you can do me a favor. Now that you are no man's rival. Yes? You know what my life as a soldier has been. Well, Clare has changed all that. You might not believe it, but I love her very dearly. Talk to her. And tell her that I have changed. We have, we have talked about you, Paolo. Oh? She admires you, she respects you. But you will only hurt yourself if you expect marriage. She isn't destined to be the lady to grace any castle. Yes, better to grovel in the gutter with a beggar, huh? No, she's dedicated to God, she's told me so. And who has told her, you? All these years, you have hovered near her like some black shadow over her life. Of course you've talked about me. You with your holy lies and holy voices, sickening obsession with poverty. What have you told her, huh? To reject a man's love, for she might find happiness with it? I would not deny her any true joy. But it is for God to say where that may lie, not you. Fanatical hypocrite. You disgust me. about out of supplies, Bernard. The 
There's more where these came from. You can have as much as you need. Just us. I ask for nothing, but the Lord asks for your heart. I am one of you. to your willing hands and hearts, this church will very soon be complete. Then what shall we do after that? Patience, Giles, we shall be told. But Francis, must we not look a little ahead to what our rule should be? Let us ask God to be our guide. If thou wilt be perfect, go sell what thou hast and give to the poor and follow me. Take nothing for your journey, neither staff nor wallet, nor bread nor money. If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. These three verses will be our guide. They will be our life and our rule, brothers, to the glory of God. Amen. I have come to join you. My name is Juniper. Both of you? You are welcome, Juniper. Most welcome. But don't you think Brother Lamb would be happier with his mother? Goodbye. <coughs> Goodbye. <coughs> Juniper, meet your brothers. This is Bernard, who was once a rich merchant. Sabatino. A shoemaker. And Giles, who left his farms. Vigilancio, a cobbler. And Philip, our scholar. John. And Tancredi, both formerly consecrated knights. Sylvester, of the Church of San Rufino. And Morico, our nobleman. We are very happy to have you with us. Good morning, Canon. I must speak to you. You seem troubled, Canon. And I am troubled. My heart is drawn to you, but... Francis, I've just talked with the bishop. He's troubled, too. Are you trying to establish a religious order here with your handful of dreamers? Brothers, this concerns us all. It is true that we are only 11 at the moment. But soon, pray God, we'll be many more. No, it's not the number. But don't you know that church law expressly forbids you to establish a new religious order? Unless, of course, you have the permission of the Pope. Oh. Well, then, let's ask the Pope. Yes, we'll go to Rome if we must ask. We must ask. Are you thinking that the Holy Father might not concern himself with an order of only 11? At this moment, brother, I'm thinking that perhaps there are 12 of us. You'll accept it. Good morning. Complaining on a fine morning like this? Why? You have wings to race across a blue sky? A beak for seed and water, green trees for nests, even a voice for song. So sing your love to the Creator and thank Him for your blessings.
They're showing us the way to Rome. <laughs> Wait for me here, brothers, until I've spoken with the Holy Father and pray that we may succeed. Luke! Oh, it looks impossible, Francis. You need a special permit to get in. Have faith, Brother Catani. How do we know what is impossible until we try? Let us pray, brothers. Excuse me. I'm trying to find His Holiness. Who let you in? Who are you? Eleven brothers and I have come from Assisi to submit our rule. We are new to the procedure. A new order? This is most unusual. And at the moment, out of the question. But if you would please take me to the Holy Father, I know he would hear what I have to say. I wish I could help you. But the Holy Father is occupied with the gravest problems, with the church threatened from all sides. How can he find time to discuss the wishes of 11 friars? 12, Your Eminence. Your pass, you must have safe conduct. No, no, I, I have not. I know that face. What did you want? Your sanction for his rule. A new order. Knowing you would not approve, I sent him away. I've seen his face somewhere. Are you certain that I have not seen you before? I am, Your Holiness. Hmm. Uh, tell us about your order. There are 12 of us from Assisi. What we request by this simple rule is permission to live our lives in humility, in the manner of the Gospels. Yes, we have read and discussed your rule, and uh, we have decided that the life you and your brothers want to lead is too severe, too ambitiously severe. Uh, but you must understand, Francis, your own devotion is not in doubt. But in establishing an order, one must also think of those who come after. They may not be as strong as you. In fact, they're not likely to be. Your strict adherence to absolute poverty is unrealistic. To maintain an order requires property. And this allows for none. It is God's will that I have none. If we have property, we shall need arms to defend it. No, from property comes strife. Uh, the church does not sanction extremes of any kind. Uh, perhaps if you could relax your rule a little.
Your Holiness, our Lord lived in extremity, and so I believe he demands me to do. How can I bargain with my belief? We all have to make concessions, Francis. In this world, we have to be reasonable or fail. I cannot defy the guidance of God. What, do you dare to defy this council and me? I, I have no choice. In that case, my son, your request has been denied. But all we ask is to be allowed to live our lives in the manner of the Gospels. It is not I who request that we should live so. It is laid down in God's word. Your Holiness, your eminences, if we say that such a way of life is impossible, we declare that the gospel cannot be followed, and so commit ourselves to blasphemy. I have seen you before, but in a dream, in a dream where our beloved basilica was falling down, and a little monk stepped out from nowhere dressed like you, and with his hands outstretched like that, he upheld the building. Within my soul I rejoiced and I awoke. This could be so. A voice told me to rebuild the Lord's house. I, I thought I had to work with stone and mortar, but perhaps I was wrong. Was I wrong? Perhaps you were. But we need more than stones and places for prayer. The heretics in France. The emperor will not be stopped with bricks and mortar. Neither will Christendom collapse. I believe my dream. And I believe yours too. But you must not think that men can suddenly be made perfect by a rule. Oh, no, we are very imperfect and the poorest of men. But we did walk to Rome and would not go home the poorer for it. The, they are here? Uh, they are eleven? Yes. Then I would like to see them. These are my followers, my brothers, Your Holiness. Are you certain that God and men will continue to assist you? Are you, my son? I trust in the Lord. Go then, Francis. Your request is granted. And may the devotion of you and your followers strengthen the whole church. And when the Lord increases the number of your flock, uh, come back to me. And I will entrust you then with greater tasks. And let your order be an example to all of us. Here, Francis, this is all I've got to give you. No, no, please keep them. Thank you, thank you. Bless you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he show his face to you and have mercy on you. May he turn his countenance to you and give you peace. been so generous to let us cut these branches from your trees. You've worked as hard as any brother. I've been jealous of your brothers, working with you to restore San Damiano, San Angelo, San Pietro. If the brotherhood keeps growing so, you'll be able to restore all the churches in Italy. You certainly have proved to everyone that God is on your side. Have I won you to my side? I've always been there. I'm looking forward to hearing you on Palm Sunday. Thank you. And thank you, Father, for these olive branches, too. Goodbye, Francis. Goodbye, Claire. All right, we're ready. Until now, we've been like skylarks all in one field. But soon, brothers, you'll be leaving for faraway places. You, Zachary, for Spain. John to Germany. Otto will be carrying our love into Morocco. Father, will you grant me permission to go with John? I can say, yeah, means yes in German. <laughs> and I say no. It means that you're better skylarking at home. Father, we, 
You shouldn't have. A token of my admiration. You make it very difficult for me to thank you. Why should it be so difficult to thank me? Claire, why have I seen you only three times in the last two weeks and never alone? Sometimes it's better to stay away than to hear what is hurtful. Why should I hurt you? I worship you. Every time you insult and belittle Francis, you hurt me. Well, can you honestly see what's so wonderful and spiritual about throwing away one's possessions to the poor? Can you? Can you imagine our Lord Jesus Christ living as a wealthy man on earth? With all due respect to a sanctity, Francis is not Christ on earth. I'll be late for prayer. I'm sorry I said that. May I escort you? My father would miss your company. Your father has given me permission to escort you all the way to the altar. If you hate love, you hate life. And if you do, your eyes don't say so. Please, Paul. Please, give me time to consider. We haven't got the time. I'm off to the Crusades, and who knows when or if I'll return. I'll pray for your safe return. Let the priest pray. You can do much better than that. You can make it possible so that nothing on earth will stand in my way of coming back to you. Paulo, don't you understand? It is nothing on earth that stands in the way. Don't talk like that. Don't speak like that. It's not you. It's Francis speaking through you. He's a disease. He wants to change you. I don't. I want you as you are because I love you. It's you I love, Claire. If you ask for love, then you must believe in it. I was not called to preach, but to do. So let the olive branch preach peace for me. It is by far the better preacher. Lord, give me the voice of thy people in prayer. Lord, make me the instrument of thy peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. And where there is sadness, joy. O divine master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive. It is in pardoning that we are pardoned. And it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Praise ye the Lord. sacrifice. Help me in my decision to be thy servant, O God. Do you know what you are asking? By your example, I have been called. All my life, I have longed to find to what I could give my old devotion. 
Love has been a confused thing in me. Until I saw your love of all life. And all God's creatures. I wish to be devoted to that love. Do you know what that means? Can you follow the way of humility and poverty? Can you, Claire? Your path will be spread with thorns. Where is Claire? She excused herself some time ago. She should be here with her guests. It's not like Claire to show this lack of courtesy. Spends a lot of time in prayer now, doesn't she? Oh, all sensitive young souls go through this phase. No, there's nothing the matter with Claire that a happy marriage will not cure. We sail from Venice a week from today. I hope the marriage contracts aren't delayed. It's already drawn up. Now let me ask Aunt Bonner to fetch the girl while we talk of the dowry. Your father will kill me when he finds out. No one will harm you. Is there any doubt in your heart? None whatever. I've asked the Mother Superior of the Benedictine Sisters to help you take your vows. Aunt Juana, could tell Papa of my decision. God help me. What do you ask? I ask to be accepted as a bride of the Lord in the monastic life. Will you be able to observe the rule and the way of living it dictates? And take the three vows of obedience, poverty, and chastity? With the help of God, I hope to. After me, I renounce the world and all its vanities. I renounce the world and all its vanities. Daughter, O oh Lord, I ask to be worthy of thy commandments. I offer thee, O oh Lord, my renunciation. You raise from within me every trace of vanity. I had a voice. I will have it now only for prayer. I had a heart. I will have it now only to throb at thy teachings. Where is my daughter? You have no right in here. This is the house of God. Claire, where are you? What is this? What are you doing? Claire, you're coming with me. No, Paolo. I cannot come with you nor with my father. This is no triumph for you. It is tragedy for her. Mine is not the triumph, Paolo. The curse on all your sins. Paolo! She's 
don't know what you're doing. Look, Francis. They're here. The children are here. Good morning, Brother Cal. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning, Sister Pig. <laughs> Good morning, Brother Duck. You're just in time. I want to thank you for asking me to bless your animals. I've looked forward to this day. You know, the animals of the earth are among God's very special creatures. They help us work, they carry us, guard our homes at night. And best of all, they bring us joy and laughter. You must never forget to laugh, even when you become a grown-up child like me. Well, now I must bless them and return to my work. Lord, we ask thy blessings for these animals and for their young masters. Nomine Patri et Fili et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Goodbye, children, and thank you for coming. Goodbye, Father. Goodbye. 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 Good morning. Thank you. Help me. Help her for the love of God. Here you are. Don't cry. For you. Thank you. God give you faith and hope. Brother. God give you peace, dear brother. Peace. We lepers have nothing but stink and decay. I'll pray for you. I don't need prayer. I need to get rid of my stink. Where are you taking me? To wash you. To wash you clean. Why are they tearing up the flowers? They must clear this plot. The order was given by Brother Elias, your vicar. What reason did he give? The colony is growing and needs more ground for vegetables. He believes we should sacrifice our flowers. Let the flowers grow. We'll replace them. I must remind our brother Elias that man doesn't live by bread alone. I know it is wrong to raise my voice against any person. But there are those in your order who would change your way of life for the sake of worldly comfort. Judge not, sister, lest ye be judged. I, too, have made a change for worldly comfort. Don't forget these sandals that you gave me as a gift. You have many difficult roads to travel. But as for me, you are quite wrong. Oh, and what am I so wrong? You said my path would be strewn with thorns. But it's been joy every step of the way. That is an error in which I rejoice. In such a short time, your order of faithful sisters has grown tenfold. You set such a perfect example. I agree. Perfect. Far from perfect. If you don't develop some little weakness, Sister Claire, you'll surely become a saint. Brother Francis, we must hurry back. All the visiting friars will be gathered down there wondering where you are. It's a great assembly today. Goodbye, Sister. Goodbye. Come on, you sinner. The Cardinal is here. The Cardinal. What a wonderful assembly. How many friars are here? 
2,000, roughly. I can remember when there were only 12. Exactly 12. I received your message, Brother Elias. I don't like it. But it's true. Yes, you have reason on your side. But it sounded like conspiracy. Your Eminence, you can't go to the Council like that. God made my foot. I'm quite sure you'd prefer to see me out of pain than see me anxious about my appearance. Colonel Hogolino. Bless you, my son. Your foot. <laughs> yes, it's just a little angry at my shoe for pinching it. Uh, bring some water, please, Brother Juniper. Here, let me help you. Thank you. Brother Tom, Brother Gabriel, Brother John. Bless you all, brothers. Juniper? Thank you. You haven't changed, have you? Was I supposed to? Power and position can make us forget our true natures. I'll never seek power. No, but uh, others may. Lord Cardinal, two years ago, I asked permission to go with some of my brothers on a crusade. You forbade me to leave Italy. I did. We had great need of you. Since that time, five of these brothers are martyrs to our faith. I can no longer ask them to face danger that I seem to avoid, so I ask you again. Allow me to go on crusade to the Holy Land. But what can you hope to accomplish there? Peace. I'll preach to the Sultan. But what would happen to your order here? With such a host of followers, you cannot leave us here without food or shelter. The time has come not to rebuild churches, but to build our own. And this we can do, with the Cardinal's permission, of course. There may be something in what Brother Elias says. What was good for you and 11 followers may not be good for 2,000. Your order must have the means to house, clothe, and feed its members. The Lord will take care of all his children. But look now, today, 2,000 people are assembled here. We know that the Lord fed 5,000 upon the loaves and little fishes. But do you claim to be able to do the same with this assembly? No. No, I can't do that. But I believe that he can, just as he did then. Excuse me, Your Eminence. The assembly is waiting for your blessing. stay too long. His Holiness is gravely ill. He's here against the physician's orders. Francis, my son, so you're determined to preach Christ to the Saracen, hmm? If I have your blessing, that is the call. Jerusalem, how can they deny it to us? Blood flows in the streets where Christ once walked. This fighting must stop, Francis. I, the vicar of Christ, should be there, but I can barely walk. I will go for you with your blessing. I could ask for no better emissary. I said that one day I would give you greater tasks. There can be no greater task than that of bringing peace to the world. So go, my son. And God be with you.
sorcerer. Come, Christian. We found him in the Sahara. Ow. If that man is not mad, he's a spy. Here is a gold coin. And tell Ali to kill him immediately. Take him! Out! I'm the enemy of no man. The God of Love sends me to speak with you, King of the East. I am told you speak to animals. And they understand your words. If they do, it is because I love them, as I love all God's creatures. You love us too? Your enemies? Of course. This God you speak of, why did he send you to see me? To reach your heart. Not with the sword, but with his love. Through the love in my heart. All this love. You wish to surrender your armies? They are not mine to surrender. I ask only for peace. How can there be peace with no surrender? If you would embrace the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, peace must follow. I didn't learn your language to hear these insults. You wish to die? I am prepared to die for peace. You die a brave man, but you are not reasonable. You want me to worship your Christ, but I reply, you come to Mohammed. You embrace the faith of the great prophet of God. There also lies